Kelly gave me these, this article here. Here's what it said. ABC Action News. Because <laughs> all news is action. Just got out of a relationship, had a bad day at work, or are you stressed and need to release without hurting yourself, someone else, or damaging your property? So, are you a grown-up who is in desperate need of a childhood temper tantrum to kick your little feet and to cuddle up with your blankie and to be met? <sighs> Some therapist, good geniuses, thanks for that. Maybe you should have read one or two textbooks in grad school are recommending a rage room or a smash room. A temper tantrum room, a pee in my pants and poo poo in my diaper room, starting to pop up across the country. I won't even read the names. It's a release, a different form of expression. Anytime somebody says it's a form of expression, hemorrhoids, I get instant hemorrhoids. I go straight to the preparation H aisle. It's just a form of expression. Oh gosh, people coming in, nurses, teachers. They do it for a quick 15 minutes, sit down and relax afterwards, and they go on with their day. So many different aspects of how great spending 15 to 20 minutes in a rage room can help you feel. And when it comes to kids, oh, good. Let's bring our kids along. This will be fun. Thanks. Thanks, parents. Thanks, adults. When it comes to kids, it can be a fun and safe activity. Kids love it. We have at least two birthdays a week here. But kids aren't allowed to use glass or heavy-duty tools like sledgehammers. Only adults throwing temper tantrums can do that. Here's the thing. It, ugh, this gets me so frustrated. Listen, your body doesn't work that way. What behaviors you choose on the heels of feelings, what behaviors you choose on the heels of an emotion, encodes itself into your body and becomes your default response. It's called neuroscience. And I'm not even a neuroscientist. I'm a podcaster and I know this, okay? What you do afterwards, when you get angry, when you get frustrated, when you get sad, when you get, um, um, I, when you have a boo-boo in your diaper and you're a grown, whatever, what you choose to do next becomes your default mechanisms. Your body outsources it to automated response. Ah, so if you get angry or tired and you go pay somebody money to smash something with a hammer, to, to crush glass, to do tough things, your body will begin to automate an angry, violent response to those things. It's just the way our bodies work, right? <sighs> this idea, it's this old pressure cooker model. It's not real. It's not real. That I just have to, quote unquote, get my anger out. No, you don't. When your fight or flight, when your stress hormones kick up, when your stress chemicals, if you will, pulse through your body like adrenaline, cortisol, those things, channeling them towards rage, channeling them towards, that's not even what rage is, but channeling them towards anger, towards frustration, towards uh, just makes it that much easier for your body to default there the next time and the time after that and the time after that and the time after that. And by the way, you teach your kids that and they grow up defaulting to that, defaulting to that, defaulting to that. Don't. Stop. When you get frustrated, feel it. Sit in it for a minute. Say the words out loud with a <sighs> sigh. I'm frustrated. I'm real frustrated right now. When you get angry, all anger is is a, is a physiological response pointing you towards something you care about. I'm really pissed off. I'm really angry right now. Because she's not supposed to treat him that way. Because my teacher is supposed to, my son's teacher is supposed to care a little bit more about him. Because the guy I hired with money I don't really have to mow the lawn did a crappy job. That guy cut me off in traffic, and I'm not about to die on the heels of a little square Kia who's driving like a maniac because they're texting and driving. Say the things out loud and let your body feel them. Go for a walk. Go for a run. Let that be your default mechanism. Grab a pen and a paper and write them down. I am really angry because. Get in your car and sing 80s metal tunes as loud as you can or whatever nonsensical pop tunes on. I don't know what's in your head. 
train your body to respond in productive ways, in healthy ways, and in neuropsychologically com compatible ways with overall well-being and health. Rage rooms, listen, I had a buddy growing up and we would get stuff and smash it. That's a blast. If we want to have smash rooms, I'm all for it. Like we can be Mario Brothers. But by calling them rage rooms, by think we're solving things, what we're doing is we're just tightening up the trigger towards an, ang like an angry response, towards a response we're not going to be able to get back, towards saying the thing, screaming our lungs out, to throwing a temper tantrum. Stop. We are too stressed, too fried, too exhausted, too burnt out as a culture to create these pathological responses as quote-unquote solutions. They're not. They're not. A walk is. A long, long journal entry is. How tough is that? You can have a journal room. <laughs> That'd be the lamest business ever. Come to my journal room <laughs> and write down your whatever. Do something positive. Hey, here's a crazy idea. Call somebody that you care about and say, hey, I don't need your solutions. I don't need your advice. I just need to vent for a minute. I'm going to talk to you because I trust you. Here we go. Do that. And then when you get angry, when you get frustrated, and you get sad, and you get overwhelmed, your body will begin to look for people to reach out to. And other people are one of the cornerstones of psychological well-being. Control, autonomy is one of the core functions of psychological well-being. Not smashing everything and yelling and screaming. So there we go, America. That's what we need, temper tantrum rooms.